let's go back to our software and find those specific outputs. So I'm going to expand this. And so this is going to be seven through, so it's going to be six through 11 since we're starting at zero. And let's just click that as out seven. So we're going to have seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, seven, eight, nine. And so we need to label them as such in order to be able to use them in our software, 10, 11, and 12. We're going to press OK, close out of this window, and, and you'll notice that those input and output points have shown up under modules and points if we expand this. Now, like I was saying, there's going to be different blocks in Pack Control Basic. So this is a action block, but we do need a decision block. So what I'm going to do is click on this, drag this onto our screen, and let's discuss this a little bit. So the decision block is going to start whenever there's a condition that goes into it. So we're going to draw that little arrow. So this is when the decision is going to happen. And the decision we need to essentially check upon is whether or not the button has been pressed. So how do we do that? We can double click the block and you'll notice that there's going to be the same menu that we've seen before. I'm going to press on add and the instruction is currently selected as end. Now we can either obviously go through this menu or we can click on select. But this is fairly straightforward. So the question mark, the question that we need to answer is whether or not that specific button is on. So this is going to be the instruction that we're going to select and is you see all valid types. So we can either select an output or we can say the start button. So is the start button pressed? We're going to click OK and we're going to close out of this. And if we put an arrow to the next condition, it's only going to execute once this block has decided that the button has in fact been turned on. Now, like I said, our next sequence is going to be fairly repetitive, but we are going to build it out of blocks. And by the way, you can also double click this, sorry, not double click, but right click. And then you can essentially rename this specific block. So press on name and this is going to be start button pressed question mark, we're going to click OK. And that gives us a name. Next, we have the condition. So we're going to start the condition. And as you can see, as soon as I press on the decision block, there's going to be a true or a false. So what if it's true, then we're going to execute whatever I tie this into, that's going to be block three. And you'll notice that there's going to be a true condition. If I go somewhere else, then it's going to be false. And we're going to take care of that in just a second. So I'm going to press escape. So this block is going to initiate our sequence. So let's think about our sequence. Our sequence is going to be wait 100 milliseconds, turn on output seven, wait 100 milliseconds, turn it off, so on and so forth. So essentially, we're just toggling between outputs. Let's create the action. So add instead of absolute value, we can actually we can do select. I believe it's a little bit easier. So timing, we're going to do a millisecond delay. Let's press OK. And this is going to be instead of all, all valid types, it can be a literal or a variable. If we set it to literal, we can just type in 100 milliseconds. And let's actually make that 500, 500 milliseconds just so we can see it a little bit better on the camera. Press OK. And we can close out of this interface. Just like that, we can rename this block. So wait 500 milliseconds. Press OK. And let's create the next block. So the next block is going to be to turn on the output. Let's see here. So add. And now we're going to essentially turn on. Let's see here. It's much easier to do with select sometimes. IO unit. Clear move analog digital, digital point. Turn on. So we're going to turn it on. OK all types, we're going to select output seven first, press OK. OK. Let's just double click, turn on output seven, we can rename this block, of course, turn on output seven. And you can give this better descriptions, of course, we're going to control C control V so we can copy paste blocks. So this wait 500 milliseconds block is going to always remain the same. I'm going to create the same arrow. 
I'm going to press escape and I, I can now copy paste this as well. So control C, control V. Yes, but remember that the block is no longer going to be turned on. Now we need to turn off. So let's double click this. Let's double click this and we can just type it in here. Press OK. Close. And we can make this a little bit more compact, I suppose. Why not? Let's create some arrows. Turn on. OK, so we're essentially turning on and then we're going to rename this just to remain consistent with the names. Turn off. Press OK. And now what's really neat is that we can control C, control V the entire structure just to make the process a little bit more streamlined. So like I said, we need to do this for six different outputs. So it would be extremely tedious to have to copy paste blocks one by one. Let's see here. And we're going to place them just sporadically and we can change that a little bit to a neater structure a little bit later. Next, we need to place some of these arrows. Let's see here. That. And you can make it as nice as you want, of course. You can even if you select the arrow, if you select this tool, actually, let's press escape, you can drag and reposition it the way you need it to be. As you can see, you can drag any elements as you please. So what we're going to do is we're going to select these to make it symmetric. I'm going to reposition this a little bit just because I want to make sure everything looks good. Next, we're going to draw the following arrow. Let's see here. So I do want equal spacing between my blocks, just to make sure everything is like I said, nicely spaced out. Okay, let's draw the arrows just to finalize this entire sequence. So it's a fairly straightforward process. All it really is, is a sequential execution of these outputs. But there is still one condition. So there is a condition when the I messed that up, there is a condition when the start button is not pressed. So what are we going to do in that case? Let's discuss that in just a second. But essentially, what needs to happen is we need to wait for that button to be pressed. And there's multiple ways to achieve that the easiest kind of brute force method that I've uh, so essentially, if this repeats, and then we can go back into the block, let's see here. Just going to draw this. It's going to go all the way back here like this. Okay, so it goes through the cycle. If the button is still pressed, then it's going to go through the cycle again and again and again. Now, if the button is not pressed, what we need to do is we need to go out of the cycle in order to recheck the condition. Well, what we can do, we can re reuse essentially one of these blocks, I'm going to press yes. But instead of making it uh, 500 milliseconds, let's make it let's say, let's see here, delay is going to be, I don't know, 10 milliseconds, for example, so delay of 10 milliseconds, I'm going to close this rename it just so we can not get confused. So wait 10 milliseconds, and I'm going to draw the arrow on the false side like so. So as you can see, whenever it's false, it's going to wait 10 milliseconds. And what it's going to do, it's going to come back and retry to see if the button has been pressed. So essentially, it's a loop that's going to check every 10 milliseconds, whether or not the condition is false, and then it's going to repeat the cycle. Now I'm going to complete all of these structures offline just so you don't have to watch and sit through that uh, experience. But essentially, I'm going to change this output 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So I'll see you guys in just a second. Alright, so here we are done with the program. The next step is going to save the program. And we can start testing. So press OK. Let's go into debug mode and download the program onto the controller. So you'll notice that there's already a different strategy running on the controller. So ours is named Groove Epic PAC Flow 2. So we're going to continue with the download, we're going to download everything. 
and then hopefully we can either we can run the strategy so when we run the strategy we're going to essentially wait for the controller to initiate any sequence and if we run the if we go online then the strategy is going to be running on its own now you're not going to see anything happening on the screen i can see it on the controller but what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into groove manage and we're going to go back into the digital outputs scroll down to the six that we've programmed and i'm going to press the button so the button is pressed and you'll notice that the outputs are being sequentially turned on we do have a problem so seven eight nine and then we have 10 now everything looks good 11 12 and then it repeats until i unpress the button if i unpress the button in the middle of the sequence you'll notice that the sequence is going to complete as expected now let's look at this back on the controller so if i go back to home and back to the controller PAC controller, you'll notice that we are running that specific strategy. It tells us how many running charts we have. It tells us that there is no auto run in place. We can put it in auto run. So it's going to stay like such, but since we are in debug mode, it's not going to let us do that. So we can stop the strategy, stop the strategy, and we can go online and at this point it should be running that specific controller so it looks like we're running the strategy we're going to look at the controller from the face point just so you can notice what's going on exactly with the outputs it's a very simple program but good experience with pack control basic nonetheless all right so here's a very basic demo of the program that we've made as you can see we're looking at the same exact interface that we had on our screen and what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the button here all the way on the top that is going to trigger the program. And as you can see, the outputs are actually toggling on the real PLC. So you can start creating routines that are going to be a little bit more complex, that are going to be reading actual signals. We're going to look at how to tie in a sensor into our PLC in the next video. And we're going to be talking a bit uh, about routines that are going to be a little bit more complex than what we've written. But this is essentially the basic programming that you can do on this specific controller. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.